I'm so sorry. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Short-term memory loss? I don't believe this. No, it's true. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. I think it's the setting of the ocean. I think it's how the ocean grows. Girl, I don't know. I think it is the study of the ocean. An increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere leads to the ocean absorbing such CO2, thus creating lower pH levels and greater levels of acidity. This results in the decaying of marine life. In the award-winning movie Finding Nemo, directed by Andrew Stanton and Lee Unkrich, the character Dory, the blue tangfish, is well known for her short-term memory loss. While it may have been amusing in the film, the reality is that this is similar to real symptoms that are caused by ocean acidification. According to the Smithsonian Ocean Portal, the pH of a fish's blood becomes chemically altered. This causes fish to increase energy use, slow growth, and alters the way the brain processes information. Dory is an example of the effects of ocean acidification. Because of us, Dory is dead. Other organisms are also affected, such as shellfish. So they're not able to build these nice, strong shells. Uh, their metabolism is compromised. Their immune system can sometimes even shut down if acidity levels are too high. Um, so that's one way that they're affected. Plants may benefit from increased CO2. However, one study revealed that in acidic waters, coralline algae covered 92% less area, letting other algae smother and destroy coral reefs. So I think ocean acidification is a topic that's kind of always been pushed aside. First of all, because, you know, ignorance is bliss. And I think people were kind of scared to recognize it because they didn't know what to do about it. Um, but I think for people to want to help is they need kind of a push to do so. And so it's one of those things you might read about it and then just forget about it. Victims of ocean acidification don't stop at just marine life. Humans are also affected by this tragic predicament. Profit will decrease due to unhealthy fish. With high demand of fish and a minimal supply on the market, the cost of seafood will rise. About one in seven people rely on seafood for their food source, so about a little over a billion people. Fish will act abnormally due to the acidity affecting sight and orientation. Tourists will face massive disappointment when they see the lack of aesthetic appeal of coral reefs in tropical areas. You could definitely see a lot of the effects of ocean acidification as you're seeing some of those coral reefs dying off. Um, most of the places when you go out and you're diving recreationally, they're not going to be taking you to the areas where the reefs are dying off. They're taking you to the most pristine environments. But I had the chance to go out on an independent boat and we went to this area where we could see the coral reef starting to become white as it's losing what's called its zooxanthellae and starting to die off. And then you can also see some areas where the algae is starting to actually grow over the coral, showing that the coral is dying. To prevent these problems, here's what we can do. Shelter wood cutting is beneficial because it provides more carbon dioxide absorption and reduction compared to other methods such as clear cutting, which releases all the CO2 and does not absorb any. The use of electric vehicles would help to lower the carbon dioxide emissions that cars release. According to the American Scientific Journal, approximately 35.6 billion metric tons of carbon is released by fossil fuels each year, 
and every year it increases. Humans need to reduce fossil fuels in order for the CO2 level to drop. Ocean acidification is happening and it's going to continue to happen because we have the high levels of carbon dioxide already in our atmosphere. But what we can do and what we're trying to do is slow it down. So first, it's a global issue. You have to get people all over the world involved to make changes to decrease the amount of fossil fuels that we're burning. Although coral reef restoration can be considered as one good recourse to ocean acidification, the problem is greater than just fixing coral reefs and requires people to take action as a nation and individually. This is not only a conflict in our community, but is also an issue spread across the globe. Everyone is affected and no one can escape this phenomenon. For example, in Kona, Hawaii. as close as the Puget Sound. <music> to as far away as the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Every part of the world is affected in one way or another, no matter where you are. The CO2 buildup will be shown through the inevitably life-threatening changes happening in the ocean. Is this the legacy you want to leave behind? No aesthetic appeal. Expensive seafood. Dead marine life. All of these effects happen due to ocean acidification, and humans are the cause. Humans need to step up and take responsibility for their actions, starting with putting a cap on the amount of fossil fuels discharged, limiting deforestation, and using alternate methods of transportation. Are you a murderer? Or a savior? Stop ocean acidification. Okay.